the adjust the microphone. I think that just made it a little easier for you, you all on Zoom. We want to jump right into our lesson. We'll have a word of prayer and we will get the elders and the saints here in Miami Gardens Church of Christ. Uh, we're thankful that you are here. Let us together. Gracious God, our Father, we're thankful for yet another day. We're thankful for life, health, and strength. Be with all those, dear God, who are under the doctor's care at this time, who are sick and shut in, who may be in bereavement. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you, dear God, for those who are searching for truth. May we teach your word with simplicity and let the powerful word you have given us do its job. May we not add nor subtract. May we just teach and preach what thus saith you, our Lord. Dear God, we're thankful for this time to study. Be with us as we study your word. May it be taught with zeal. May it be taught with simplicity. And most importantly, may we apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This lesson could have easily been entitled, Why Me? But I kept it to, you know, the song we sing often, Yield Not to Temptation. And oftentimes as we go through trials and tribulations, I don't know if you've, if you've done it, I have. When you just ask sometimes, why me, Jennifer? Why me? Why not? Uh, I'm doing everything I need to do, but why me? And so temptation, let's, as we look at the text, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 primarily. Our lesson text comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. For your convenience and to make it a little easier uh, for this Bible class, 99% of the scriptures will be on the screen for your edification as well. Let's look at a little pretext. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse number one, Paul is writing to the saints, to the church of Christ located where? At Corinth, hence 1 Corinthians. He wrote two epistles or two letters to the saints at Corinth. And that congregation had its challenges. And so Paul says, moreover, brethren, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse one, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Paul says, I don't want you to be unaware, brethren, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. He's talking about as you know, again, looking back at the children of Israel, who as the, on that mass exodus out of Egypt, how God was with them. God guided them. Watch this now. He said they were under the cloud and passed through the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. Thank you, Charles. Right on cue. Uh, and we're all baptized, that word baptized, baptizo in the Greek means fully immersed. Now, Moses didn't sit there and say, y'all line up one by one, Hogan, okay, let's go Hogan, let's do the Nelsons. No, no, they all went through. They went, they were fully covered. Amen? That's why that word baptized. Some people go there and say, see, Moses had a baptism. Technically, yes. Moses was the mediator. It wasn't a baptism. To, they were delivered. They were saved by water. It's baptizo. But they, they went down into the Red Sea and they were fully covered. They walked on dry land. We get that. Amen. Y'all help me now. Amen. Make surely the soul. That's y'all all I got. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. So God guided them. God delivered them. Verse two, verse three, God fed them. You know, manna from heaven. And they all eat, did eat that same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock. Remember about that rock with Moses? You know, again, he just, he'll speak to the rock and he struck the rock. So again, disobedience, but God was with his people. Very important. And they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. As my, as my big bro and keep brother Rick in prayer, uh, kind of overdid a little bit. He's under the doctor's care. And he's going to be fine. I talked to him a few minutes ago, but keep, keep my big bro in prayer and one of our elders as well. Uh, so when, when Brother Rick mentioned last week, patriarchal, God spoke through the heads of households, the fathers, patria, P-A-T-R-I-A, and the Latin means father. He, like paternity is a derivative. God spoke through the fathers, heads of households. God spoke through Moses, the mediator. And then the last dispensation or time frame or age was the but we're in right now, the Christian age, Donna. So God speaks to us through Christ. So the rock that followed them was Christ. So after they were delivered by Moses, there was no other, there was no salvation, uh, you no, know, then I mean, they were delivered, but it was eternal salvation. Christ, a new and better covenant. Y'all all right? There's a reason I'm taking you here, starting in verse one, uh, if you will, Jesse, because see, Paul is saying, we all need to know that God was with them 
So if God was with them, the likelihood, the probability that same God will be with Amen, Sister Caraballo. Y'all, rest of y'all know what y'all what y'all doing. Pay attention now. Even on Zoom, if God was with them, this is Bible class. If God was with them, he guided them, he delivered them, he fed them, he protected them. They walked on dry land through the Red Sea. They were baptized, fully covered, but with the guidance of God, delivered by God. And the enemies, when they went on that dry land, what happened to them? They were, they were drowned in the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his in those chariots. God was with them, God will be with us. Here it is. But here's the transition. But long before we get to temptation, we need to, we need to understand where we came from. And Paul is doing the same thing. Brothers, and when we say brothers, we're talking about the family of God. May we never forget where we came from. Now you've heard that phrase that, you know, you know Rick and I grew up in inner city Toledo, Ohio, 1028 and a half. That meant we didn't have, a, we lived in an apartment upstairs. 1028 and a half, we had a half up top on Hamilton in Toledo, Ohio. What's my point? It guides us today. I joke with my kids, but I'm very serious. There's things you all have that we didn't even, couldn't even think about. So Paul is saying, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. God delivered. God delivered people. Stop serious. <laughs> but verse five, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. Even though God delivered, even though God protected and fed, we still can be, let me just say it like I want to say it, we can still be a trick. What will it take for us to just stop being so selfish? Paul said, brother, and I don't want you to be ignorant. Although God delivered, he still was not pleased with some of them for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So you made it through the Red Sea. And just recently, I was on the water. I'll just leave it there. And let's say it was more than 100, 200, 300, 400. It was more than 500 feet of water just recently. And let me tell you something. It didn't go very well. I'll just leave it alone. I'll just do that. It didn't go very well. Y'all all right? Imagine, I can't even imagine walking through on dry land, seeing that much water to my right and to my left. I'll be like, thank you, Lord, whatever you need me to do. I'm good. But they got over and they got into, now they're in the wilderness, murmuring and complaining against God and God's leadership. Now these things, here it is. Why do we have this? Why am I going over this with the church of Christ in 2021? The Bible says, now these things, deliverance, protection, providential guidance, but also accountability. Some died in the wilderness. Why do we need to hear that? There's a word that you see when I was in school, oftentimes with a nephew, I would see a problem, but if I saw one example, that's all I needed. Let me see that example in, in math, especially. You show me one example, I got it. Paul is saying, here's an example. Now, these things, verse 6, were our examples to the intent for the purpose. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Paul, why are you telling this? Why are you telling the Corinthian church this? You see an example. Sometimes I can tell Hogan, don't do this, don't do this, Hogan. But then when, when he can see it happen with somebody else, just using my buddy as an example. Sometimes we learn better just seeing it through other people. That's how Paul is teaching, by example. He said, if you, because we can see what they did, what they went through, and what they suffered, we should not lust after what? Verse 6, evil things, as they also desire to lust it. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. My brother Big Bro mentioned last week, and it didn't take long, I think he mentioned on Wednesday night, the golden calf. Here are these people that were delivered, now bowing down to a golden calf? Idolatry. Idolatry, by definition, is anything you exalt as God that's not God. Some people worship buildings today. People want to travel all around the world. I think it's, it was a real de Janeiro with the Jesus that's got his hand like, is that real? Somebody help me out. Geographically. Thank you. Thank you, nephew. I, I just want to just touch. You, can, you ain't touching Jesus. Somebody manufactured that. But it's, take a picture. Yeah, it's, it may, you may have, there's all kinds of buildings and structures that are great sights to see, but do not elevate anything. Amen, saints? As God, that's idolatry. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Everything was good. Well, brothers and sisters and visiting friends, Paul is saying, remember 
our brothers. Learn from them. Don't be idolaters today. Put nothing, elevate nothing as God. Your job, don't elevate your kids. And, oh, oh, no, 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 kids are kids. Don't elevate anybody as God. There's only one God. And he says in verse eight, here we go. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. See what Paul is doing? Don't do it. They did it and you saw what happened to them. And fell in one day, three and 20,000. 23,000 died in one day. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Paul is saying, here is your example. Exhibit A, B, C. It's When you think about a, a modern day trial, here's all your exhibits and or examples of what we should not do. But Paul, where are you going with this? Now, all these things happen unto them for examples. There it is again. And they were written for our admonition. Class, can somebody tell me what admonition means? Instruction, learning. They were written, they, we have these examples and now Paul is writing to the church of Christ located at Corinth and he says, these examples are written for our, now we got to get to the pronoun. Now you're saying, now saints, we don't walk through the Red Sea. That's not how God's going to deliver us today. That's not how God delivered us or saved us. We're saved by the gospel. Paul is saying now, brothers and sisters, our personal pronoun, our instruction, our teaching, we can learn from them. And now why is it, look what he does now. He takes us, gives us the time frame. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Is there a quick question class? Is a yes or no? Y'all can even answer on something. I can't hear you, but I still want you to answer this question. Is there another dispensation after the Christian age? I love the resounding no's. That is correct. There is no other time frame, dispensation age after the Christian age. There is no, Christ came. He is now in the right hand of the throne of God. He is coming back again. He, he's already been here. He, he went, he said, John 14, 1, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. I will come again. He's coming back a second time. There is no third time. That is false teaching. That is taught religiously. Sadly, let me look in the camera and say this. Sadly, I have heard brothers in Christ, some of whom I've talked to here, about a third coming. Ain't no third coming. Matter of fact, y'all gonna make me go to scripture. Get your Bibles. I'll go to the book of Hebrew. This is not on my PowerPoint slide, but y'all made me do this. Y'all all right? I don't know what y'all gonna do if you ain't, but that's all right. That's the one to ask. Hebrews. Did I say good morning? If I didn't, well, good morning. Turn your Bible to the book of Hebrews. Let's just stay in the text. Hebrews, let's go to chapter 9 very quickly. Hebrews chapter 9, that's what I want. We oftentimes read Hebrews 9 and verse 27. And as it is appointed unto man, what? Wants to do what? Die. But after this, the judgment. Welcome, Aldridge. Verse 28. So Christ, watch this. Hebrews 9 and 28 for those that are joining us online. So Christ was once offered to do what? To bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the third time. A fourth time. Thanks. Stay in the book class. Stay in the Bible. And unto them that look for him will he appear the second time without sin unto so there's two salvations there. Christ died to bear the sins of many. He so through the gospel, we are saved. We get into Christ. Say amen if you believe that. But now once we are in Christ and we live faithfully unto death, Sister Wilson, we then can be saved for eternity, eternal salvation. That is not found until Christ comes back the second time. Y'all all right now? That was bonus. Y'all got that for free. Let's move on. Now, Paul says, remember our brethren, they acted a fool. They suffered. Don't be like them. Don't be like them. Recognizing that these things were, I gave you these examples. 
but now these are written for your instruction and your teaching. Because we, this Christian age, is, the, is it. The end of the world's gonna happen, 2 Peter 3 and 10, during the Christian age. Nothing comes after. Now, Paul says, because of that, if we learn from others and we know that Christ is heaven's best, there's nothing better, nothing greater, and nothing, no thing is coming after Christ. So anything by anybody that says, uh, you know, there's this new thing and, you know, now it, maybe, maybe through cryptocurrency, we can find it. Stop all that foolishness. A new world order, all this, all this teaching. Okay, there may be different kinds of currencies. There's only one Christ. You can talk all you want about what's happening and wars and rumors of war. The Bible talks about all of that. But what I love about the simplicity of scripture, we don't have to be spooked or scared as children of God. One God, one Jesus Christ, one Holy Spirit, one place of salvation. See the pattern? One place for eternity, one place, one or the other, I should say. So wherefore, here we go, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand and take heed, be aware, lest he fall. So if we don't learn from others, if we don't learn from this simple time frame that this is it, this is the best you can do. If we don't run this race, we, you know, Rick and I ran track. One of the best coaches ever, Coach Ronald Sleeper. And what he taught us on that last leg was something called a kick. And I, I would, and again, I would start off real fast. I get tired before the end of the race. He said, I want you to slow down, Nelson. They call me Little Rick. I said, my name's Gay. They said, Little Rick, come here. My name's Gay. Got was a little, little bit. So when I, I listened to coach, I sounded like that too. With the same attitude, all that. They didn't call me Gail until my junior year. So I was cool with this. They were cool being Little Rick. He said, you start off slower. And I want you, and he said, you're going to see me in different places on this course. And when you see me on this course, I want you to, when you see me, I want you to sprint and pass 10 people. This is cross country. He'd show up, he'd, like, he'd nod his head. I'd, I'd keep on running, says Smith. I'm like, this is good. I, I didn't use all my energy up in the beginning. Pass 10 people. He said, now when you get to the end, you kick. That means you sprint. You go all the way to the finish line. He said, because you can see the finish line. Why are you slowing down? The closer you get to the finish line, you speed up. So saints, my point in using that example is as we recognize that we will see that this is it. Let's do all we can to keep on running. Life is not a sprint. I don't mean it in that context, but don't stop. Don't slow down. Don't look side to side. Well, what do people think about me? Just be, just be godly. If wherefore let him that thinketh he stand to take heed lest he fall. Now here we go. Paul says, we read the scripture all the time. Now you see the pretext. Paul said, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Let me read them, we'll break it down. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. You see the examples of your brothers. These are written for our instruction. The end of the age will come during the Christian time frame, dispensation or age. Don't get too big for your britches. Let him think that thinks he stand, take heed lest he fall. Don't get full of pride. I don't care how much money, how much talent, I don't care, whatever you have. Don't forget where we came from. Amen. Oh, and by the way, you're going to be tempted, just like they were. So Paul, what are you saying? I'm putting it in red to make it easy for you all. So Paul says, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is what? Common to man. That's your first point. Temptation's common. Don't, so don't ask the question, as we said in the very beginning, Sister Jennifer, why me? Why not you? Insert your name, Wilson. Insert your name, Van Cole. I'm, I ain't got time to tell all y'all names. Insert your name, Lewis. Insert your name, Nelson. Don't ever ask the question. It's a foolish question. Why me? Everybody on Zoom. Don't, well, Lord, why, why all this stuff happening to me? Why not you? This may be exactly what you need to grow up and mature, to slow down, to put life in perspective. Paul says, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common, it is common to man, it will occur. Everybody will be tempted. Moving on, but God is faithful. The same God who is with them, our brothers who fail, 
our brothers who were delivered, our brothers who murmured, our brothers who were idolaters, our brothers who were forn fornicators and murmurers, they were held accountable. Don't do what they did. God baptized them through the Red Sea. They were fully immersed. That's all that means. Through the Red Sea. And they still, some of them were not pleasing to God in the wilderness. What will it take to make us happy? Just to, for us to be content. We pray for a job. We get a job. I'll oh, pray for me. I need to make more money. You, you were making zero a week ago. Be thankful for that dollar you make a week. I was a slow amen to y'all. Can it be two? Y'all are something else. Temptation is common to man. God is faithful. We can trust him. Who will not suffer. What that word suffer mean? Allow. I love it. Who will not allow you. Look at this. God will not allow. How much power does God have? He's omnipotent, all powerful. So God has this thing set up in such a way. Swallow this now. Digest this. God will not allow, suffer us to be tempted above that ye are able. So why is it? So it's either you're going to believe God or you're going to go ahead and trust the devil. You may never use those words, but that's what it comes down to. I got so much on me right I've heard saints say this. I got so much on me right now. I don't know what to do. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted above that ye are able? But look at God. But will with the temptation. God will take the very thing that we are going through. And what will he do with it? And make a way. We sing the song, the Lord will make a way somehow. Some of y'all don't know the song. It's somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow, Aldrich. Somehow. But we, you know what we want? We want to know how. But that's why it's, that's our faith. Well, tell me what you're going to do, God, then maybe I'll trust you. That ain't faith. Let me stay in this camera. Y'all understand? Paul is saying, do, it, do we need, we see what they did. Now, God is working with us. He will take the temptation and make, it, make a way to escape. I'm looking at two exit signs. God will make a way to escape. Imagine, going, like, circling this auditorium, trying to, I don't know which way, I don't know which way. God's like, I got two exit signs right here. Do you see it? Do you trust me? That ye may be, that ye may be able to bear it. I cannot stress how important it is to have people around you to talk to you this way I'm talking to you. You need people that can just look at you and say, Hogan, snap out of it, brother. I know you called me last week. You called me every Sunday. Ain't nothing wrong with that, brother. But brother, you've been complaining about the same thing for like the last three days. What are you going to do about it? That's what we need. we need. We have to be accountable to one another. Let me go to the next slide. The power of relationships. Get this. When we engage in toxic relationships, we can be adversely affected. I see people. Let me use a very general business context. I've had a business meeting where somebody stood up and said, we are not happy. I said, is that right? So I mean, they, they do that to me. Oh, they, you don't. Is that right? Y'all aren't happy. Can everybody who's unhappy, this, you just spokesperson? Yeah. Oh, okay. He don't work for us anymore. What's my point? Don't speak for, I don't speak for Lewis. Lewis needs to speak for himself. Don't tell me Banco's unhappy. Banco's sitting right there next to you. I said, can anybody, I said, everybody, I said, let's go one by one. We'll go around the room. Tell me what you're unhappy about. And let's address it. I'll, I'll get the marker. Go. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So now you put this brother out here. He all big and bad. So when y'all you, had that little meeting, everything was, yeah, I said, I tell him, I ain't scared. They ain't giving you their paycheck, bro. Y'all all right? Don't be that ring leader. Amen, saints. Let me move on. When we engage in toxic relationships, we can be adversely affected or impacted. Many saints begin the process of drifting or backsliding simply based on the company they keep. Be around people that's going to push you forward. That will help you to grow and develop. Teammates. It starts with bad company that can lead to bad thoughts, but it can lead us far away from God. Be reminded, saints, the devil is always seeking whom he may. First Peter 5 is whom he may devour. So I want to just let you know, one, trust God. Know that temptation is real. Know that God will put more on us than we can handle. Know that God will make a way to escape that we can't handle it. But let's make sure we understand. Make sure we understand that God is absolutely 
in our corner. Two words, remember vigilance and sobriety? By this time, if you've been in Miami Gardens for any amount of time, you should know what these two words mean. Vigilance and sobriety. What does vigilance mean? Gladys. Okay, y'all just making stuff up. Okay, we move on. What does sobriety mean? Now, I've been preaching here almost 20 years. Let me move. Let's see. So 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, be ye what? Sober, be vigilant. Sobriety means to be. What's the opposite of sobriety? Y'all can say it. They say it on Zoom. You've been so, <laughs> drunkenness. Sobriety, drunkenness. When you're drunk, are you in control? When you're sober, you are. So be sober, be in control. If we're not in control, we can let our emotions get aside the side of us. I wonder if anyone here, just say amen, I don't need to know the details. If anyone here has ever made an emotional decision and after further review, you look back and say, probably shouldn't have said that. Amen. All right, are we okay? I don't think we got too many liars now. I think we're good. <laughs> Be in control. Don't let your emotions, don't let anything, any outside influence, any other out, a person cause you to lose your soul. Be sober, be vigilant. What does vigilant mean? Vigilant. Oh, alert. Who said alert? Raise your hand. Who said, good, good. Time. Alert or aware. See, it's almost as if, and if you all look, look at me for one second, please, it, it, it won't hurt too bad. So when you, you're doing this, look, being aware of your surroundings. I'm in control. I know where I'm going. I'm following Jesus. I know he's coming back again. So I need to be aware. I see people around me. It's like, okay, this, this is always asking me this question but it's never anything positive once you have that awareness it's like sister uh, how is that tell me something as good as going in your life you'd be amazed how people respond if you you some of y'all may be the complainer i don't know i'm gonna look at the clock because i don't want to get anybody mad even either the complainer or the complainee somebody either coming to you so the key is let's do just the opposite as the bible instructs let us encourage one another exhort one another and so much more as we see the day approaching amen Hebrews 10, 25. So be in control, be aware, because, because the devil, yes, Sister Swindle, the, ever, the devil as a roaring lion, our adversary, our enemy, the opponent as a roaring lion, walketh about. Guess how he's walking about? He's seeking. Let, let that injured brother, I don't mean injured physically, injured spiritually. Let that injured brother, if there's a gazelle, that's limping in the wilderness and the lions in the, in the woods, in the cut, nephew looking, and they see the herds moving forward, encouraging each other. And here's one that's injured, lagging behind. Guess who gets eaten that night? You see somebody that's struggling, pull them along. Come on. Come on, Audrey, let's go. Bro, you don't need to talk like that, brother. Come on. And it's hurtful sometimes because obviously as a servant, uh, you got to encourage people all the time. And when you hear people that just don't want to hear it, brother, come on, man, we miss you, we miss you. All right, yeah, okay. Brother, the, the, the lion, he's, he's going he to get you. I'm good, bro. Y'all just pray for me. Yeah, yeah, it's a time for prayer, it's a time for action. We've been praying for you. Come on back. Amen. Devil's not playing. We got to be in control. We got to be aware. Because Paul talked about deliverance then through the Red Sea. He's talking about deliverance now through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And as we look back again, there's, we're going to talk about the reality of sin in, in our sermon today. But in 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 6, as we close out. Well, not only do we look at the children of Israel, but we look back at Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, Abraham and Lot. The Bible says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow. Making them a what? There's that word again. An end sample. Example, end sample, figure, pattern, just a figure, just something you can see and learn from. Sodom and Gomorrah, it's a lot of foolishness taking place, a lot of sin. God made them an example unto those that should, that what? What's that word? After should live ungodly. So why do we study Sodom and Gomorrah? It's 2021, brother, because you learn from that example and sample for those who will come after. I hope, trust, and pray that uh, Chantel and have four beautiful kids. I pray that they don't make the same mistakes we made. That's why we got to teach and we got to share. 
Don't do this. Well, I, why? Why am I saying that to you? Because I made that mistake. Don't do that. That's what Paul is, that's what Peter, excuse me, is saying. And see, what did God do in the midst of making an example of these, this sinful, these sinful cities and deliver in the midst of sin? We can still be delivered. The world we live in, there's things that are promoted, exalted, celebrated, that are just flat out sin. So we don't throw in the towel and say, I give up, there's too many of them again. No, no, no. Last time I checked, eight souls were saved by water. Amen. And delivered just lot, vexed. We're going to talk about vexed. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. What did he do? Because that word vexed means he was in pain and torment. So don't ask the question, why me? It may be in your own family. Listen to me. I have looked at, I have talked to some of my own mentors and my own family. Let me talk about my family. You, you deal with yours. You know your family better than I do. Who I looked up to growing up, still loved, but spiritually, I'm like, what happened to you spiritually? I've asked this question of some of my own family members. I've sat in the living rooms with scripture. What happened? What changed here? This hasn't changed. You have changed. Can anybody relate? Lot in the midst of Sodom and Gomorrah was vexed. He was in pain and torment as a result of their sin. For that righteous man, 2 Peter 2 and 8, dwelling among them and seeing and hearing was in pain and torment. He was vexed. It vexed his righteous soul. How often? Day to day. With their, not his, with their unlawful deeds. Thanks to God, I want to just stay here for a minute before we wrap up. Don't give up. We have children that have grown up here that are unfaithful. We have adults who worship here that are unfaithful. Don't give up. Your exampleship, your consistency, the ability, because you don't know how you impact others. The same Peter talked about a a husband with an unbelieving wife. No, a wife with an unbelieving husband, excuse me. And what did he say? He said, you should nag them to death. Is that what he said? He said, just nag them and then they'll probably obey the gospel. You can run them away. Your example can lead them to Christ. Your chaste conversation, in other words, your holy lifestyle. When they say, you know what, through it all, she's still faithful. Through it all, he's still faithful. And always has an encouraging word. It is hard when it comes to family. Let me say this as clearly as I can. I'm going to look right in that camera. It is hard. Because you say, you, you know better. And that may not pull them back. That may push them away. Because they do know better. You're stating the obvious. Maybe you go with, I love you. And I'm praying for you. That sits a little bit better. Because they their conscience has to eventually prayerfully not be seared with a hot iron. Hopefully their conscience will cause them to say, you know what, I can't live this way. I love you. I'm praying for you. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Anything you need, let me know. How oh, that's it. That sits a little bit better, but it's hard. Because you know what the flesh wants you to say? I just want to shake you. Can anybody relate to that? It's just me. I want to shake you. Just find out what's going. What, what are you? What are you thinking about? That's what the flesh wants to do. But we have to be mindful of our impact on other people. Lot was tormented by their sins. But here's what I want us to understand. Here's our comfort. Even in the midst of sin, the example of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot being vexed, was delivered by God. Here's our comfort. The Lord, what? Knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. So we need to pray. Lord, help me be more restrained. Lord, help me with self-control. Lord, help me be a better example to those in my family who have gone astray. Lord, help me say the right thing. Lord, grant me wisdom. Can I get an amen from somebody? <laughs> Lord, grant me wisdom. Lord, help me. Because it is hard. 
Maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's just a Nelson family and all the extended family that's having like that has family challenges. Is that is that right? Maybe this must be the perfect class. <laughs> I got it now. Y'all a little late, but I got it now. <laughs> God knows how to deliver us, Jesse. Just stay with God. See, Paul and Peter are telling us that God is able. There's so many examples of ungodliness and it will affect us, but God put left it to us. Remember what Paul says about earthen vessels? See, we are the ones. We are the ones, 2 Corinthians chapter four and verse seven, but we have this treasure. Remember that word later on. This treasure, there's something of value in earthen vessels. It's us that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So the last time I checked, it's not about gain. Insert your name. So if somebody goes astray, not doing right, family, friend, or foe, my job as an earthen vessel is to stay in my lane because I'm not God and neither are you. Amen. So the prayer is, Lord, help this lowly earthen vessel shine bright that your excellency may be seen. And it's just not about us anyway. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Paul is basically saying, hang in there. Temptation is common to man. But God is faithful. See if y'all taking notes. God is faithful, who will not allow us to suffer above that we are able, but will with the temptation make a way to amen. So with that in mind, don't put anything above God. Wherefore, my beloved, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. As we look to the word of God today, it was at the cross, as we said earlier in our class, in Hebrews 9 and 27, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. But that Hebrews 9 and 28, paraphrasing for time. See, God is not only giving us the physical death, but there's also spiritual death. And Christ is coming back again a second time. Don't let anybody ever trick you, beguile you, fool you, hoodwink you into thinking there's a third coming. It is taught. It is well, people have invested heavily and well, Christ already came. You're going to come back again. This is no, no, no. Second time. No third time. I can't. It has permeated the Lord's church. That's why I'm saying it so adamantly. It's been taught in pockets in the church. Now, now, now talk to these brothers. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. How can you miss Hebrews 9 and 28? Show me anywhere in scripture where it's going to say a third time. Second time. At the cross where he died. He's not now in heaven. He's coming back again the second time. So while we are yet here, do not yield. Do not give in to temptation. If it was easy, then we could do it all ourselves. What did Jesus say? I am the vine. Ye are the Without me, ye are nothing. We need. I hope, trust, and pray that something was said today to encourage you just to keep on keeping on. Don't let anybody or anything cause you to stumble, slow down, keep running. And as, I, as my coach used to say, Rick and I, as our coach said, when you see me, you speed up and I'll be there at the finish line. As we think of Christ, don't slow down. Don't look left or right, that'll slow you down. Just keep on running. Charles, what do you have? How can we escape? That's right. There's no escape. We have, we have one Savior, and Christ will see us at the finish line. Let us together pray. Thank you for those that are online joining us. We hope, trust, and pray that you were able to follow along and to take good notes as well. Do not give up. Do not yield to temptation. Let us pray.